Hello, everybody. I have Colleen Alper with me today, and we are going to be giving you an insight track into mm -hmm. what our views are on things you should keep an eye out for in 2020 in terms of really intelligent automation and all things beyond, because Colleen and I wanted to make this a little fun and um, a little different from maybe some other conversations that people are seeing on a day to day basis. Um, so before before we dive into all of our crystal ball predictions, Colleen, do you have any resolutions that you made for yourself going into this year? Ooh, good question. You know what? No resolutions for me. I in, instead try for the past couple of years, I've tried to pick a word that would guide my year. And this year for 2021, I chose the word align. Probably sounds a little corporate, but the intention behind it is to align myself with the present moment, align everything I'm doing with my values, and align myself with people like you who are doing really cool, innovative things so that I can grow as well. How about well, you? I, similar mindset. I'm not a huge resolution person, but just like innately in life, we're big goal setters in my house. So we set goals together and going into the new year from like a family perspective and then individual stuff. So one thing as we head into 2021 is staying active every day. Um, I feel like I've been a lump on a log here in front of my computer a lot. So um, even if it's going for a walk or doing a dance party with the girls in the living room, something every Fun. day to make sure I'm moving. Yeah. Um, and then another that's kind of a hang along from when I was a teacher, I'm trying to make it to 52 books in the year. So one wow. a week. Um, so it's, it's a combination of reading and listening. Yeah. So don't worry when I'm going on my walks, a lot of times the books are coming along with me, but, um, combination of things that are, you know, fiction and interesting that way, as well as stuff that'll hopefully help me learn a bit more about the technology that we're talking about today. A book a week. That is <laughs> audacious, my friend. If I do a book a month, I'm proud of myself, like letting everyone know kind of thing. Good for you. <laughs> it, it's, it's a point. I'm, I'm called the, uh, Bookasaurus a lot in the house because I'm always <laughs> reading. So anybody that's joining us live should put their resolutions oh, that they yeah. have for themselves into the chat as we're going. Um, let Colleen and I know what you guys are focusing on as we jump into our predictions as they pertain mm. to technology. Yeah. So the first one, and Colleen and I put our heads together to kind of narrow down these five choices. And it was pretty much unanimous mm -hmm. between the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Cloud migrations galore is going to be something that we see take off even more in 2021. Um, you know, from Navient's perspective, I don't know if there's a single day that goes by that I'm not talking with a current customer about moving solutions to the cloud or having conversations with potential customers about what their options are and the advantages of a cloud hosted solution. What are you guys seeing on your end of, of, the, of the bucket, I guess? <laughs> same, same. I mean, cloud is imperative. If the pandemic taught us anything, it's that remote work, virtual environments are here to stay. We've seen a huge desire within our customers to focus on the solution and not the infrastructure. And that's a huge driver of the cloud as well. Uh, just to give you some stats from the Highland side, in 2020, we saw twice as many cloud migrations, so prem to cloud, as 2019 and 18 combined. And in terms of net new business, our cloud business was up 30% over 2019. So the cloud is definitely here to stay, and this is the year to make the move. See, and I've got like the nice feels, but Colleen's coming in with the hard statistics. <laughs> <laughs> this is a legitimate prediction with statistics to back it up. Yeah. Um, one thing that we were talking about too is some of the concerns in terms of cloud hosting security and how companies are really starting to move beyond that. And I was telling you my little analogy of like, do you want to keep your savings account under your mattress in your bedroom and hope that you can protect it? Or do you trust it in a bank with people that are focused and specialized in keeping it secure and managed correctly. And I kind of see that as the same dichotomy with the cloud hosting. Absolutely. I think a lot of the fear around cloud security has been disproven and has dissipated. And we even see the cloud as being more secure thanks to all the certifications we're able to provide from ISO to SOC to NIST. And heading into 2021, we're looking to get the FedRAMP certification as well, which is big for both government and healthcare industries because there'll be that extra layer 
of security <laughs> controls. And at Highland, our cloud is managed, so we do the work for you. We've got a team of people maintaining the infrastructure. It's private and it's multi-instant, so none of the data is commingled. So now I want to transition to some of the questions that we asked in a poll earlier this week. We had kind of mixed results with fitness by far being the, mm -hmm. the one, you know, where fitness kind of soars apparently now, Colleen, yeah. <laughs> um, where people wanted our insights into what to watch. But we're also going to sprinkle these in without. So we're going to start with fa uh, fashion trends. And my prediction is that the 90s trends are going to continue to come back up. Mm -hmm. I've got, you know, some clothes that look reminiscent to my childhood in my closet right now, um, as well as work from home stuff really mm -hmm. starting to move into making everyone's workplace a little bit more casual. What do you think from the fashion perspective, Colleen? I couldn't agree more that the work from home wear is uh, going to continue into 2021. That's going to be a hard trend for me to break. I also think we're going to see mask fashion emerge in 2021. The masks are here to stay. And I think we'll start to see like masks coordinated with outfits and the sleek black mask, almost like the black cocktail dress, like being like that timeless piece in everyone's wardrobe. Yeah, I'm a I'm a black mask girl. It matches everything. I don't have yep. to think about it. But I could see like monochromatic kind of like the yeah. where it's matching everything that you're right. wearing. Um, anybody who has other predictions, drop them into the chat. Yeah. We'd love to see what your thoughts are okay. as we transition into mm -hmm. our next technology driven topic of RPA. And, you know, I think we'd be living under a rock if we didn't make some sort of prediction as mm -hmm. it pertains to RPA. But I think we're taking a little bit of a different stance mm -hmm. than some of the stuff that I've seen in other areas. And our thought process is that RPA is really going to come onto the playground and play nicely with all the mm -hmm. other tools. And we're going to see it as a automation extender for maybe some of the workflows or um, case management applications mm -hmm. that we've seen in the past and really taking our automation to the next level. What are your thoughts on this, yeah. Colleen? I love this RPA as an automation extension. You know, at Highland, we have been automating processes for years and years and years with workflow. But, you know, in many processes, there comes that point where the, the workflow just can't do it. Like there's that inaccessible application that we need to jump to to grab information and pull it in. And this is where RPA has that sweet spot. I think in 2021, we'll see organizations start to implement RPA learn about the technology, learn some lessons along the way, and, and really see RPA become that extender. You know, we acquired another Monday, which is now Highland RPA. So within the bundle, automation bundle for our customers, they can get workflow and then extend with those RPA bots as they need to. And part of what spurred this conversation was I saw a maturity model that Gartner put out talking about mm -hmm. RPA specifically and how as the solution ten, or continues to evolve and grow and mergers and acquisitions take place, content services, document management, and you know, really automation, other automation tools yeah. are all going to have to be a part of RPA's maturity journey. Um, so that'll be something that I think everybody should keep an eye on as, as we continue to hear more and more about intelligent automation and how these tools blend together. Yeah. And, and I think from the RPA perspective, it's it's becoming tangible. You know, the designer that we have to design the processes is con configurable. You can actually get a free bot from Highland and download it and begin to play around with it. So I think we're going to see a lot of that this year, experimenting and implementing RPA technology for sure. So Brian put a comment in um, on the chat about his resolution from a family perspective on positivity and health. And I wanted to bring it up because I think it fits really nicely into our kind of bonus trend that we're going yeah. into in terms of food predictions Ooh. for this year. And um, my prediction is going to be that people are, you know, we're all at home. We're cooking more, mm -hmm. at least in our house. The vitamin D all of a sudden supplement has taken an uptick as we're <laughs> to stay healthy. Um, our girls have started taking multivitamins now that they've reached that appropriate age. Yep. So I think supplements and just general wellness and health are going to continue to be a trend that we see moving into 2021. What are your thoughts on this, the idea of food? Yeah. Well, I wish I could say like everyone else that I took 2020 as an opportunity to learn how to cook. I did not. So I think <laughs> that the trend that I predict is the continuation of like the take and bake meals. So not just take out, but like really, you know, more on the gourmet side foods being prepared, you get them cold, you bring them home, heat them up, and you've got a full feast. We did a lot of that this year, and they were delicious. 
we have a, on Tuesdays, we have gymnastics and pizza night where we go get our take and bake pizza. So <laughs> we're already not gourmet, but we're following. Yeah, you feel me though. Yeah. Take and bake will be huge in 2021. I think the other thing that we'll see is like grocery delivery not going away. Oh yeah. I don't know if anybody is going to all of a sudden be desperate to get back in front of the, the grocery store and go, you know, searching the aisles. Um, so I think we'll continue to see that take take hold um, a little bit more and more as we head into 2020. Agree. I did my first delivery order last year and I'm not going back. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So transitioning again back to the topic at yeah. hand, um, <laughs> technology. And I talked a little bit about the idea of case management. And, you know, there's lots of different names that are thrown around for low code solutions or rapid application development tools. Um, and I saw a, an article uh, earlier this month that was talking about how case management is going to take a resurgence yeah. with maybe a different name. And I'm thinking these names might be in the running for what they're going to look like. But case management is really looking at at, or you know, rapid application development is getting solutions in the hands of business users quicker to solve problems without having to go down the path of custom coding. Um, what are your thoughts on this one, Colleen? 100%. Uh, at Highland, so we have had WorkView Case Manager, which is our low code product since, believe it or not, I don't even know if you know this, Emma, since 2003, we have had that WorkView <laughs> product. And, and I agree, we actually are on and in on this name change trend. So we're dropping the case management term from our product and making it more about the person and the work that they have to do. You know, for those who aren't really familiar with low code, I think it's more than just drag and drop and configurable. It's really about getting business solutions out quickly. And we saw a lot of examples of that within our customer base in 2020, you know, uh, many pandemic related solutions. So COVID outbreaks or vaccinations or incident or crisis management, just being able to spin up these apps that were suddenly needed to meet a business need that never existed before. I think the response on that COVID one was something that was really interesting to watch happening live. Like, you know, yeah, as, right. as the need arose and it was something that no one was expecting, but both Highland developers and customers alike were taking advantage of these types of tools to really make a difference immediately. Yeah. Um, anybody again online who is watching, join in with your um, predictions if we haven't mentioned mm -hmm. something that you're thinking of. Yeah. And drum roll, we're gonna head into the poll results, <laughs> biggest requested predictions, which yes. is yes. And, um, so from my perspective, I think the, um, we're gonna keep seeing people, you know, trying to take advantage of the fact that they're mm -hmm. at home and they don't have um, commutes or other things to worry about. You can kind of log off and hopefully go get in a workout. That's been kind of my my go to. But I also think we're gonna see a little bit more of like hybrid work or workout mm -hmm. models where you may be a part of a gym or a um, studio, but they're going to hopefully keep giving you remote options yep. to engage with them, even while you're working out at home. For me, this is great because I used to go to a yoga studio once a week. And as soon as I'm able to, I'll start going back again. But I do a video from them almost every single day. Yeah. So That's I have cool. a new subscription and I am getting even more into the game than I was before. And I'm not going to let that, you know, let go of that as we head into the normal again. Yeah. Good for you with the online videos. I cannot get into those in the same way as I can in a studio class. So I'm still masking up six feet apart going to the studio. But you're exactly right. Our local studio within the membership and the class offerings, they now offer both an online version. You could do the virtual class or you can come into the studio. And I don't think that's going away anytime soon. I think we'll also continue to see just almost like this little resurgence of like back to basics in terms of fitness, going for a walk, going for a run, get tennis, something where you can be outside moving around and having fun and, and almost make it social, but you know, still stay safe. And for me and my kids, I don't know if you've heard of pickleball, that is so <laughs> hot here in Northeast Ohio. It's like a combination of tennis and ping pong. So fun. My kids and I are obsessed. Uh, we did have a pickleball conversation on that chat because I knew that that was a fan favorite. Yeah. <laughs> so coming back to our technology trends, and we're going to kind of poke fun at ourselves because I think yeah. we've been talking about this one since I started at Navient at the very mm -hmm. least. But finally starting to see the real kind of death of the printer and paper mm -hmm. more out of necessity than anything with COVID. But 
why would you change your process back to something that's paper-based when we start going back to the office and moving into business as usual? We're going to keep these paperless processes now moving forward. So I think maybe we're about to see the final death of it. Yeah, I think the the pandemic was the nail in the coffin for paper and printers. You know, I, I think paper will always be around in terms of writing that handwritten thank you note. But in a business world, it's gone and and hopefully gone for good. I mean, we all know the pains of paper slowing down processes and businesses and the cost. You know, printer ink, believe it or not. So I, I heard this stat recently is the most expensive liquid you can buy. And, and oh. <laughs> most like more expensive than Dom Perignon champagne, which is just crazy. And just on a, a personal front, I think the printer is like just the most annoying appliance ever. It never seems to be working. It's always out of ink or jammed or it's just like, see ya. <laughs> Since we've been home with COVID, the only thing that I have printed out is return labels to send stuff back. For me. And I actually had to go use someone else's printer because ours is downstairs unplugged. And not <laughs> so, um, at least in our house, I think we're done for good. Yeah. Um, and I think right along with this too, I think we'll also start to see, you know, the uh, cash. I mean, what is the future of cash money and paper money? I think we're going to start to see that disappear as well. And just how icky it is. If oh, so gross. So gross. <laughs> before, and I think COVID made us realize just how dirty it is. We've got one other bonus trend before we head into our final technology driven trend for yeah. 2021. And that's this idea of obscure sports. So Colleen, you mentioned pickleball yep. making a resurgence around here in the Madison, Wisconsin area in the summer. That was a big thing. Um, right now, I think I have more friends that have purchased snowshoes than yeah. I, oh, I think really? ever even thought of the idea before. Yeah. So Cross-country skiing and snowshoeing, which never never were, were like a hugely popular thing in my group of friends, are suddenly making a big comeback to get outside and see people that maybe, you know, you aren't in your, your close-knit group that's coming inside the house right now. So yeah, what about absolutely. any other predictions? of? Yeah, you know what? I mean, certainly the bikes, like getting a bike. You could not get a bike. <laughs> to save your life in 2020. I think the, the bike trend will continue. I also think we'll start to see some roller skates and roller blades emerge a little bit in 2021. Like get out, get moving, have fun. I did see someone in our neighborhood with one of those weird, like one wheel skateboard things zooming oh, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe those will come into <laughs> Stand up paddleboard, right. that'll be big. Yes. Okay. Oh, I did get into paddleboarding this summer. Ooh, but it's so fun. Um, okay. So our last trend, technology focused and beyond, is new ways of learning and training. And you know, this goes, I think, beyond just e-learning modules or webinars, which obviously were a part of things before, mm -hmm. but conferences, podcasts stuff like this LinkedIn Live, we've found new ways to learn and consume information through all of this that I don't think are going to fade into the background. What are your thoughts on this, Colleen? Agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I read a stat recently that over a billion kids were out of the classroom in 2020. And certainly all of us were working from home. Uh, the podcasts, I think, are going to continue to be huge. I got hooked on podcasts in 2020, and so did my kids, which was really cool. Just, you know, in their own way, like as a way to learn and meditate about different things outside of school. Uh, I also had the opportunity in 2020 to attend some conferences that I never would have been able to attend because of travel or time or expense. So Microsoft, Skillsoft, uh, an industry product conference, CMX Global, you know, all had these free options where I was able to participate and, you know, learn from home. Yeah, we're having conversations about what we do. We want to get back in front of our customers. We want to be in person with our conference. But we're looking at how do we make hybrid models available so that if someone can't travel or can't get there in person, that they can still hopefully experience a slice of that. So um, I think it'll be really interesting, especially like you mentioned with podcasts and voice. Yeah. 
you know, there's new social media platforms that are popping up that are completely voice driven. And um, so I think it'll be really interesting to see where all of this goes. But we just know that there are going to be new and innovative ways for learning and training as we head into 20. I agree. And it's really exciting. There's so many benefits. I mean, you can learn on your own time at your own pace. And and we're the same at Highland, our community live conference, our big user conference. We're, we're still fingers crossed going to be in Vegas in October, but there will absolutely be a hybrid component where you can you know, participate from home. Well, with that, Colleen, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that joined us live or is watching the broadcast afterward. We'll revisit this as we head into 2022 to see which of our predictions were accurate, what maybe we are going to keep saying, like maybe the death of paper, maybe it's never going to go away and we're just going to keep <laughs> saying it forever and ever. But thank you everybody who joined us live and is watching the broadcast. And Colleen, thanks for joining me and have thank a wonderful you so much. day. Thanks, Emma. This was so much fun. And thanks, everyone who tuned in live. Bye. Bye.